Hey guys, in this video we'll be going through a few examples of how to make HTTP POST requests from an Angular application. As usual, I'll put the link to this post that I'm going through in the video description below so you can follow along and uh, access the code and links. First, we'll be making a simple POST request with a JSON body that returns an any typed response. Then we'll be doing the same request and getting a strongly typed response with an interface that we create. Thirdly, we'll be doing a request with error handling to an invalid URL to catch an error. And lastly, we'll make a request with some custom headers set, so you can see how to do that. Uh, the end of the post here has the prerequisites that you need to have set up for making requests from an Angular application, so we'll touch on those when we set up our app first. So the first things that I'll be doing uh, I'm on a machine at the moment with, with a node um, and npm and the Angular CLI installed globally. So the first thing I'll do is create a new application for uh, testing using the Angular CLI. So I'll cd into my projects folder that I have here and with the ng new and I'll call it Angular HTTP posts. We don't need routing. Now once that's done, cd into the project folder and type code and dot to open it up in VS Code or open it in your editor of choice if you're running something else. And this is our boilerplate application that's generated by the Angular CLI. We can go into the app component HTML and blow away everything in there and just throw in a div and we'll add a title and your HTTP post examples. Uh, save that back in the command line. If we run npm start. Okay, that's ready to go now, listening on localhost port 4200. So let's go open our browser tab and check that out. And there's our title. Okay, now starting at the end of the posts, we'll set up our Angular app with the prerequisites that we need to make HTTP requests. First of all, within our app module, we need to import the HTTP client module from the Angular common HTTP package, and we need to import that module into our into our Angular module. That module includes the HTTP client that is used to make HTTP requests from Angular apps. So, then our app module file, paste that there, and copy that and add it to the imports array of the ng module decorator and save. Next we'll be updating our app component. The app component we need to, so within the app component is where we'll be making our HTTP requests. So I'll need to import the HTTP client and add it as a parameter to the constructor and then by doing that the Angular dependency injection system will inject the uh, HTTP client instance into our component when it gets created, so we can make we can use it to make HTTP requests like this in the ng on init method. Now, rather than typing this out manually, I'll copy this example app component and overwrite the one in the generated. Well, here I'll just make sure it's all the same. I'll need to update this back to app root. But other than that, I think we've got template URLs, app component HTML, which is the same. We're not using any less styles, so we don't need that for this for our for this video. So I'll paste that there, change the selector back to app root and I'll remove this 
just for the moment so then we can start fresh from this uh, blank canvas with uh, being ready to make our make our HTTP request. Let's just go back into the browser to make sure everything is still working. Bring up DevTools so we'll be able to see the HTTP request being made. Now this is the second time I'm actually trying to make this video because the first time I realized the JSON placeholder API that I was using when I created this post is having issues at the moment. So I found another test API to use, which works in a similar way, which uh, is called, I'll jump over here, I've, uh, this is Postman. So this uh, is another API called recres.in, which is another fake API, which has an endpoint called slash API slash users. And you can send it some dummy data, like name JSON, hit send, and it will respond back with the uh, request body that you sent along with an ID and a created at um, date. What we'll do in our Angular app is we'll take that ID from the response, assign it to our local, um, it's called post ID in our example, but because it was a post that I originally used over here, but uh, we'll assign it to the post ID and then display it in our uh, Angular template. So I'll copy the request code here and then we'll change the URL and get it working. So this is to make a post request with a JSON body and a response type of any. So the response type that comes back will be of type any, which means that we can access, means that this data object will be of type any and we can access any uh, property on it without TypeScript complaining. I'll paste that in there, and I'll change from this URL to one that we know is working. And I'll change it from title to name, doesn't matter what goes in here, and we'll subscribe. And the data, as you can see, the type returned is any, because we've set the any type there. And then we'll be assigning that data.id that gets returned from the API to our local post ID. Save that file. And then in our template, we want to display the post ID when it comes back. So I'll add a div post ID label. And output the post ID there. Save that and back to our browser. And there you can see our post ID displaying and the request to the test API, requires.in API users with our post body that we sent and the response that came back. Okay, moving to the next example, we'll have a strongly typed response. This time, We'll create an interface, a TypeScript interface that contains the properties that we want to return and we'll return a strongly typed response. Display the same data using that strongly typed response instead. So the strongly uh, typed response, the benefit of it is that you will get a, um, is that you have IntelliSense and type checking while you're, while you're developing. That's the benefit of using it over the any type. So I'll add the interface into the same file here. The API that we're using doesn't return a title, it returns the name because that's what we're sending here. So instead of any, I'll now set this to article. Now it's not technically an article, but it was with the other one, so bear with me. Um, and now if we hover over data, you can see that it's an article type. And if we type dot there, we get IntelliSense for the, for the um, properties that are on article. And if just for fun, we change that to data.name to display into the post ID and save that, we should see the name pop up in 
the UI instead. So there's the same request and response, but instead we get a strongly typed object instead back. So now if we were to try to get a title that doesn't a uh, title, a property that doesn't exist on that returned object, we get a uh, IntelliSense and um, type uh, type checking within um, within VS Code to tell us that uh, that that property doesn't exist on type article. Change that to ID there, and we'll jump to our next example. Uh, posting with error handling. So this time we'll send to an invalid URL, and we'll add an extra callback to the subscribe object. So you can pass a next callback for a successful response and an error property to the subscribe object to, to uh, get called back if there is an error with the request. So we'll copy that and put that into here. So now to force an error, I'll just change this to invalid URL and save and we should see over here that we're console logging an error if there's an error the message there was an error and that's what we can see in our console and if you wanted to put something in the UI for an error, you could as well have another property, say, I'll create an extra error message property, so this dot error message equals to string. And then if we show that in our UI, save, and we should see, okay, it didn't to string very well, but you get the idea. There might be a message property or something like that on there that you could get instead, or the status code. All right, now lastly, we'll send a post request with the headers set. So to set headers for a post request from an Angular app, you pass in a, an extra object after the body parameter with a headers property, and it's just um, a, a standard JavaScript object with keys and values. So I'll uh, copy this uh, headers object over here and paste it there. And then use our pass our headers object in as a parameter after our after our body to the request. Save that. And you can see it's still an invalid request because it's an invalid URL as expected, but we should be able to see our request headers down here. I've got my custom header foobar, which is what we set here. And should be an authorization with my bearer token there. So that's how you set headers on a HTTP post request from Angular. Alright, I think that's it. So that's how you send HTTP post requests from an Angular application using the HTTP client. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Um,
please like or subscribe below if you did. Cheers.